and prepare to go live. You know what to do to go live? We're live. We're live. Hello. Look, uh, hello. Um, <laughs> welcome, everybody. <laughs> That's good for our producer told us that we were live. Um, <laughs> welcome to the Steady Andy Rant. I'm sorry a bit late, but we are working on government time and we should have actually been another half hour. But um, I'd like to... Uh, I'd, um, you right, guys right there? Yeah. Cool. Um, it's over to you. Hello. How are you? I'm Steady Eddie and um, this is my rant. Um, basically, uh, in March of this year, I applied for the Disabled Support Pension and um, after nearly five months, I got my final letter last Monday and they told me that I don't actually meet the criteria. So it's a big knockback from the federal government. And um, apparently that my legs, are uh, they meet the criteria, but my, my top half uh, doesn't, which completely confused me because, uh, you know, a hand like this apparently um, is fully functional, according to them. So, um, yeah, I've had fun and games and um, now the only recourse I've got is to either appeal or become a bank robber. Or, or go for 20 jobs a week. Or, or 20, 20 jobs a week. <laughs> yes. And I thought a fantastic, James, I thought a fantastic job for me would be a Coles. Coles. Yeah, at Coles, mate, because I... what I could do is collect the trolleys, um, tow them behind me, and collect them and take them back. Yeah, it. Um, no? I, I, look, I tell you what, I was with you helping you fill out that form, and I thought we ticked all the boxes, but um, yeah, it uh, wasn't the case. And um, I was just amazed at what they, what they actually knocked you back on. Like, you know, for example, like. Um, and let's talk about this. You 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 haven't needed to get on the pension, have you? For, you've been working, haven't you? Um, for uh -huh. uh, thirty years, I've been a stand-up comic, and um, for the last eleven years, I've been working um, with P and O cruises. So um, as soon as COVID raised its ugly head, um, the cruise industry was decimated. And a lot of us was out of work. And um, I had to think about how I was going to live. And um, the, the first thing was Job Seeker, which I'm currently on. And that's just ridiculous. Yeah, look, I, I, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm just gobsmacked by the whole thing. And... and... Because um, you've had some experiences, haven't you? Um, some funny times, almost not funny, laughable, like, you know, your times even with trying to get into Centrelink, etc. you know? You, you've, how's your experiences with Centrelink, just getting through the front door? Uh, get, well, well, they've got access into it, but actually talking to someone who we, knows yeah. what's going on is completely an utter, you might as well just hit your head against the steel post because, you know, at least you know what the outcome is. Yes, yeah, that's very true. You know, <laughs> maybe that's what I should have done and yeah. give myself more brain damage and then I would have got the pension. So um, we've been talking about also, um, you know, growing up, etc you know when you were little um it was great having a chat with you and your mum yesterday and um um yeah you guys were you were telling me like when you were really young and you got on that bus oh yeah yeah i mean i've always been left to centre mate and um when i was young probably about 12 years old i 
I was attending the Mossman Spastic Centre in New South Wales. I still can't believe that there was a place called the Spastic Centre. But they had buses. Yes. You know, with, with Spastic Centre plastered all over them. And so I, I, um, I created a position to get the, <laughs> the name taken off the buses. And I was all of 12 years old doing this. And I tell you, that didn't win me any friends, you know. No, no, that wouldn't. And, have... and like, I, my teachers always said to me, you know, you've got to be inconspicuous to fit into the mainstream of society. And then every morning a bus would come to pick me up with spastics in her written down the side. I mean, you know, how can you be inconspicuous <laughs> when they're advertising the fact? Goodness me. Yeah, yeah. And um, look, just with your plight, I, I'm amazed. When, how do they let you know that you were knocked back with a disability, with a pension? I, it was a phone call. A phone call. A phone call. <laughs> well, first of all, it was a phone call, and then there was a letter on my Gov app. But first of all, it was a letter from uh, some bloke. I can't remember his name because I was so frustrated. I was seeing red and every other colour of the rainbow as well. And... Um, you know, at that moment in time, I realised why they got strict gun laws in this country. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but um, he just told me that my lower body met the criteria, but because there was no doctor... Um, examination or paperwork on the upper half, they gave me a zero. <laughs> so according to them, that my upper half is, as I said, fully functioning. It looks it, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We should have taken a video of me walking in here. Oh, yeah, yes, because, it took about 10 minutes. Well, that's why we're actually late, because <laughs> <laughs> I, I was walking in here. <laughs> the step took you about five minutes. Well, that's good. And well, that was with three of us. Normally it takes me ten, so yeah. I'm getting better. <laughs> but don't tell them that. And you were saying also, um, uh, when you went to Centrelink, they were, you were talking about jobs and this, this girl brought up this strange uh, yeah, analogy. The, yeah, the analogy, yeah. I think that was a perla. She said to me that, it doesn't matter who you are, you know. You could be, and she said, a doctor. <laughs> and if you were a doctor out of work um, and they found you a job, even if it was in the med wasn't in the medical industry, you would have to go for that job and take the job. And... <laughs> <laughs> My mind starts ticking over as it does and I thought to myself, hang on, we're in the middle of a pandemic <laughs> and there's a doctor actually out of work. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, wrong analogy there. Yeah, yeah, and I noticed um, I was going through that 20-point plan, you know, you've got to get your 20 points. I'm going, yeah, 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 yeah. And it was interesting, a really severe point um, when they were talking about movement and being able to move and everything. And um, I think it said on it, um, if you were um, if an amputee and loss of limbs, to put down that that limb is non-functional. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, very uh, interesting. Um, loss, loss. Yeah. If you lose the limb, non-functional. I know. It's crazy, crazy. A bit like their brains. Um, yeah. I, I just want to know who thought up the 20-point system. It was probably an AI or an FI. 
Uh, definitely a F I. Oh, yeah, yeah. And um, I wish I could tell you what the that F is, meant. Yes, but, um, it's a something idiot. I'm, yes, I'm sure you can guess. Yes, fliphead, 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 idiot. Flipping, uh, flipping AI. And so, um, so what have you got to go through now to actually? To, to, you've got to re restart again and prove oh. that you're not, that you are actually are disabled. I don't, I don't think I have to, from what I know, I don't have to start the whole process again, but I do have to um, get some extra documentation. Right. So I've got to go to an expert in the field of cerebral palsy and get them to diagnose me and assess me. So this is certainly giving you heaps of um, material. So, so, hey, if he says I'm not disabled... <laughs> bring on the revolution. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Mate, I mean, I, I just don't understand how they can knock me back. I mean, I can barely walk, as you know. Um, I... I basically get around in a little red scooter or I get around in a 35-year-old wheelchair. And um, if I don't do that for fun. No. You know, if I could walk, I would. I know. That's what we could look. We brought on somebody just to give you the water for a drink of water because yeah. that would have been half the show. Just well, n normally I would nip out and get myself a water. Yeah, but, but that's the show. <laughs> I'd be back next week. <laughs> yeah. Um, so with your... So, look, so up until two years ago, you are working, everything was fine. Then, yeah, the COVID hit, and so that was the end of the line for you, basically, financially. Um, and you've done... Well, I've, gigs. I've had 11 gigs... In nearly two years. Yeah, yeah. That's it. It's been hitting everybody um, in the entertainment scene, hasn't it? Oh, look, I'm not saying I'm the only one in dire straits. There's, there's got to be thousands of people out there. That's why in, part of the reason we're doing this, because, you know, we're, you're getting support and help from friends and that, but, but what the, about for people out there that don't have that? Well, I'm just amazed that there's something like, in all honesty, Centrelink and, and other government bodies are act, and the government in general, in theory, are supposed to be there to help us and help with the quality of life. And instead of helping, they're hindering. And not to mention the mental health of, of people out there and myself. I mean, I suffered depression for a while. And people go, how can you suffer depression? I said, well, you have your life taken out from under you, your, your ability to go out and, and be a part of society, to pay your own bills, to get yourself out of the car and simple things into a petrol station is has become a challenge. Yep because you haven't got the right um, uh, equipment or in the right um, uh, if, support, yes, really. Yes, yes, you need that support just to, just even going to a shopping centre. Like, you're fine once you're in there on your scooter and that, but just... I'm getting... sweet, but, I mean, a bloke with no balance... And one good hand, contrary to popular belief, <laughs> trying to get a 27 kilo fold up scooter out of the boot of his car. Have to call a taxi. Uh, man, like my mum helps me. Yeah. And my mum's 82 I years know. old. She's and she's lifting this scooter, helping me lift the scooter. Yeah, it's, um, it's pretty, um, yeah. It, it's... Um, I mean, it's just ludicrous that I do, I do not fit the criteria. And and I, and you've had there's been all this conflict. 
confusion with the NDIS stuff too, like in having a support coordinator, local area coordinator, service provider, and that it's just um, that's compounded the things a little bit too. But you have received some good news, haven't you? Well, the good news is that NDIS has finally come to the party after many, many, many months, and my wheelchair is six to ten weeks away. Oh, great. T and tell folks about your the wheelchair you use now. When did that, how old were you when you got that one? <laughs> that was brand new in 1985. <laughs> So if you're gonna, if you're gonna sell it off in an auction. I think I'll, I'll sign it, yeah. and then I'll, 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 yeah, I'll auction it off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so, with, you know, with everything that's been going on, how how are you? Are you coping? I'm I'm better than I was. Yep. Um, a couple of months ago, I was. I was in a dark place because uh, nothing was seemed like going right, and I spent hour after hour after hour in Centrelink trying to um, explain to these people what's going on, and the best they could give me is check the website. Out of all the, don't get me wrong, I've had a couple that were really good. But the problem with Centrelink is you never get the same person helping you. You don't have a caseworker. And that's totally ludicrous. Mm, mm. Uh, and by the way, I've got to add this too, is the assessment, right, that they do for the DSP, I find this amusing. I don't know why, but... For, to assess a physical disability, they assess me over the phone. Over the phone. So, so, how, <laughs> so you could be anybody pretending to be anybody, but that they, it's, it's. You'd think that they, you could go into a Centrelink office somewhere for somebody to say, "Yep, that's him. He's, he's, he's paperwork and that, and he looks. Yeah, yeah he doesn't look right. Yep." Now, shouldn't the assessor be a qualified doctor? You, well, you think so. That yes. actually assesses you while you're in the same room as him? You you would think so. But uh, look, there's, there's a lot of things that are pretty weird right now, and especially with COVID going on. But uh, on the lighter side of things, though, like, I suppose you've been getting a fairly good... <laughs> excuse me, you just went on your tour up north, did a couple of shows, didn't you? Yeah. And uh, but half of that, that mostly got cancelled too, didn't it? Yeah, the first half of it or over half of it um, was cancelled because of COVID. Um, just as we we're about to take, I was about to go to Brisbane and fly to Townsville and go to Port Macquarie, uh, Port Douglas for the first gig, and lockdown of Brisbane, and then Townsville was on the lockdown. So that was the first bit of the tour out the window. And that was um, with Jolly Jingo, wasn't it? Yeah, Jolly Jingo, and we're now, we've teamed up together and we're calling ourselves the Jingo Brothers. The Jingo Brothers, that's really cool. And um, hopefully we'll get to do some more stuff in September. Well, you, I, I, I've heard a little birdie say that, Jingo, uh, that uh, Jolly Jingo's coming down this way soon too. But, um, yeah, he yeah. is. He is. He's um, thinking about coming down here. And what we wanted to do is also, maybe we could do it here, do a do a live stream stream concert. That'd be great. Well, I think we could do that, couldn't we? There's a production yeah. in the background all waving and putting up their hands and big smiles, yes. <laughs> um, so... So you've got things to look forward to apart from more just trying to, you know. I d don't get me wrong. It's not all doom and gloom. You know, I've even though I'm going through a lot of crap, I've still got a, a better life than some. Yes. You know. 
I think uh, I just need people to know and, and be fully aware that these so-called departments are, that are, are said to be there to help you aren't doing their job. And, and when that happens, um, it's a breakdown of everything. Mm, mm. But surely you're getting a lot of, um, you're, you're getting some good meat material for some of your comedy show, your comedy. Oh, yeah, yeah, look. It's sad it has to be that sort of thing. Yeah, but, but mater material, yeah, okay, it's good material and it is. <laughs> you know. It's ludicrous, a lot of it, isn't but, it? But uh, on the flip side, I've paid, uh, this is the way I think. I've paid my taxes for 30 odd years. Yep. I've never asked for anything that I don't deserve. I've done charity gigs, I've done everything in my time. I've raised a fair bit of money for charities. And all I wanted was a fair shake. And, and, and You've paid a lot of money to um, agents too, haven't you? Yeah, <laughs> yes. It's another story. <laughs> it's another story. But uh, the thing is, all I wanted is what taxes were set up to do. Help you in times of need. Yep. I don't want to be on the pension, quite frankly. You could become an MP, mate. You know, that's, that's got all the benefits, hasn't it? No, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a big enough thief. <laughs> oh, I believe you like coffee with ice cream in it. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> have we got a big straw? <laughs> yeah, you'll have to. How, how full is it? Not too full. Oh, cool. Not too full. Can you? I'll get there. You'll get there. Oh, Thank oh, you. Geez. A straw. <laughs> So yeah, we've worked together over the years, and it's been great. Like I first met, um, I first met uh, Chris Steady Eddie. Um, oh, I was at the turn of the century. Yeah, would have been. Yeah, <laughs> a little while ago. Just a bit. Yeah, yeah, in Trabby, and um, yeah, we've been mates and seen each other on stages and played up together at um, Early Beach and a lot yeah. of fun. And it, um, but it's so good to see. You, you look, you're still breathing and still happy and still can make crack a joke, you know. Oh, you got to be able to crack a joke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and uh, as you said, at least, at least the government departments are making it easier for me. <laughs> I don't even have to write material anymore. <laughs> just... I just go in for my my fortnightly meeting and bang, it's an instant routine. I mean, once I went in there right at the first, the first time, and I wasn't even at APM then, I was at the Centrelink, and they were saying I'd had to go for 10 or 8 a fortnight job interviews. <laughs> and, I, and me being me, I thought it was funny, but apparently not. I've looked at her and said, so tell me, how many jobs have you got for a 52-year-old spastic in a red scooter? <laughs> what and was the response? I'll get my supervisor. <laughs> and the supervisor came over and she didn't have an answer either. <laughs> what do they call security then? <laughs> No, they couldn't because I didn't swear. Ah. <laughs> I actually can have restraint <laughs> now and then. Yes. Yep. You have had you have had security guards circling, though, haven't you? Oh, they were circling because when uh, when I get frustrated, I auto automatically talk louder because. No, seriously, it's part of cerebral palsy yep. because when I get frustrated, I get spasms in the vocal cord 
and then uh, I compensate by getting louder. And apparently you're not supposed to do that. Not in Centrelink. In Centrelink. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, as I said, even that's not set up for people with disabilities. No. They don't even realise that happens to you. And the guy who gave me the news about um, failing the criteria who rang me, oh, coincidentally, there was no ID caller. It was from an unlisted number. Yep. So I couldn't complain. Yes. Um, yeah, it's ludicrous. Just, yeah, ludicrous is the word of the day, isn't it? Yeah. So what about all of all our friends down south of here, the Stones Throw Away, they're all in lockdown? Mm. That's got to suck, isn't it? Mm, mm. You know? So, and, yeah, all the gigs that were, you know, and stuff like that. But, um, yeah. But, and, and people don't understand that um, the entertainment industry at the moment is so fragile. Very fragile. I mean, Paul Kelly, one of the biggest names in Australia, he just had to pull about half a dozen gigs. Yes. John Williamson just pulled half a dozen gigs. Um, there's heaps of them. And and there's um, well, we lost the um, we lost the Gimpy Muster and everything else too. It's been um, but up to just recently, you could go to a football match. That's what I want to do with my. Downtime, go to an oval and watch a bunch of Neanderthals run around. <laughs> Outstanding. We could make it a musical uh, match or something like that, you know, couldn't we? Where the, <laughs> all the, the sportsmen were actually musicians and playing instruments. Oh, but they'd call that a concert, wouldn't they? Yeah. But, uh, Don't get me wrong, okay, I like football. I think football is cool. But I do not, I do not uh, agree with NRL. Um, any, any, any game, whether it be football, cricket, or whatever, that's played for pure monetary value, then I think nah. And and it's it's is it coincidence that um, the borders weren't shut until all the footballers and their families were in Queensland. Hmm. Yeah, there's some interesting side takes, aren't there? And you go, um, well, and, the, and we're talking about this because it just shows you the double standard of the government. Yep. Not only about disabled people, about people in general. So basically, if you've got heaps of money, you can do what you want. Well, there's still people flying in and out of the country if they've got the dollars. That's the yeah. That's a fact. If you've got the dollars. Anyway, anything else you want to rant about? I don't know. Is there? Oh, Come on, you've got to have a couple of questions. Oh right, it's only three thirty. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> so you, there's so, got to be. Yeah. Look, and look. Going back to, like, uh, the NDIS, we didn't speak too much on that, but you've had difficulty trying to get the right... It's been just... Uh, between your support coordinator and the local area coordinator and everything, it's been confusing, hasn't it? How do you feel about that? Like, you know... It's, 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 no, it, it's not confusing at all. I know what exactly is going on. Mm -hmm. um, they don't stay in the job. Keep you know, like there. your area coordinator says, yes, I'm your new area coordinator and I will do this, this and this for you. Yep. And then three months later, you ring up and go, I'd like to speak to so-and-so, my area coordinator. I'm sorry, they no longer work here. Mm -hmm. So then you've got to start all over again and explain what you actually need. So it's round and round the merry-go-round. Ah, oh, look, you know, I've been waiting for this wheelchair for... I started the process in September last year. And then I got an occupational therapist. 
I won't say her name, but she was below par and she was in for the money, you know, and she was billing me $33.15 every 15 minutes to do paperwork for me. <laughs> and then, so anyway, by November, I got a, a guy out, Mike, his name is, from Surgical Engineering. He makes wheelchairs, right? And he, he's actually a good bloke and he's, uh, I think, paraplegic and he lost a leg as well. So he's got a double whammy. And he, so he started designing wheelchairs years and years ago. So he, he um, measured me up and everything and, and off he went and off she went and time went on. January of this year, heard nothing. So I rang this occupational therapist and the words out of her mouth, the first words out of her mouth was, yes, I guess I better get onto that and submit that paperwork. Goodness me. So with all the thousands of dollars she had leached out of my fund through the NDIS, she had done absolutely nothing. Apart from earn money? Lie in her own pockets. Mm, mm. Got another occupational therapist, and I had her for a period of three weeks. She was that good that she got poached, I reckon. But she got all the paperwork done, came out to see me. I saw her once. She came out to see me once. She did all the paperwork and submitted it all in 10 days. So she did in 10 days what the other one couldn't do in, what, four or five months. Wow. Wow. And that's why the NDIS, in, in theory, is a fantastic idea. It really is. But in practicality, there's no oversight. And you've got people wrought in the system and people like me, uh, and and I'm only tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. Mate, I only want a wheelchair. There's people out there waiting for life-saving equipment that they're not getting. Mm -hmm. You know, there's people dying before they get what they need. Mm. And they're throwing money at these providers, but they won't give me a pension because I don't meet the criteria. Where's the logic in that one? Why don't you give me some of the money that you're giving to the providers that do nothing and then I won't have to be on the pension? That's right. Yeah, it's it's um, oh, it's a crazy old world, isn't it? That's no, it. it's just run by bureaucratic <laughs> imbeciles. <laughs> That's why it's crazy. Yes. It's yeah. Scott Morrison. Ah, oh, Scomo, you mate. Scomo, you little. Yes. You you know him, don't you? I do know Scott Morrison. You... I know Scott Morrison from. From my young days, yeah, yeah, I was I was fourteen or fifteen at the time, and I was in Sydney, and I was in Boys Brigade, and um, Scott Morrison was in Boys Brigade, his brother Alan, and was, and his father John Morrison, was actually um, the captain. All oh, right. Of the our company. The, oh, right. the 120th Waverley. And we went away for a, a, a camp, a cent I think it was a centenary camp of Boys Brigade in Canberra. And at that time, I, I, um, I just got a haircut and I got a little rat's tail at the back. 
And uh, Miss Captain Morrison. Captain Morrison, yes. Didn't like it. Oh. So he ordered Scott and another guy to hold me down and cut it off. So he's a bit of a bully in his young Yes, days, a he? man who's gone nationally and said, I am not a bully and I'm against it. Hopefully he's changed his ways since then. But He I has don't... and he's just... <laughs> I really want to say something. <laughs> yeah. But uh, this is M-rated. It, it is, but it is M-rated. Suffice and, to say. And the views of, uh, no, and, the views these, and facts from my these, friend here aren't necessarily the views of no, other creative discourse. No, no, just, <laughs> no, just, thank you, come back to me. Yeah. These are my views. Yeah. Right? These are my experiences and they're not lies. It's what's happened to me. And um, whether you like him or not, that's a fact, Jack, and that's what happened. <laughs> fact, Jack. Wow. And any any other little things you can bring out of the bag? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I don't know. Man. <laughs> I think I'm going to be in enough trouble. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, the truth hurts sometimes. But, um, yeah. Um, so... You're based just north of Gympie, aren't you? I'm in a, a little um, bush estate called Glenwood. Yep. I've been out there for nearly 15 years. We won't give the address after the information. But, okay, so. but basically, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm looking into moving now. Yep. Um, because I can't physically handle it. No, I've been to your place a few times. And, and yeah, it's... it's um, yeah, I don't I, know how you get I, I can't even get on the... I used to do most of the outdoor stuff myself because I'd just hop on a ride on and go around, but I can't even do that at the moment. It's just beyond me. The heart's, heart and mind's willing, but the legs just go, nah, not happening. And, and when you were going personal here a little bit, but when you are Really, really little. When did you just? When did you realise that you you were different to the, everybody else? See, that's half my problem. You I don't never, think you're different. I, I never did. Yep. Um, my mum always taught me, you want to do something, to do it. And nine years old, I was, you know, uh, living in Clovelly. And um, I said, I want to go to the beach. She went, off you go. Because she knew I knew everyone down there. Yep. So all I had to do is get on one bus. And unbeknownst to me, my sister followed me to make sure, <laughs> just the first time, to make sure I did could do it. Yes. And then that was it. I was down the beach whenever I could. But, uh, you know, I've always done stuff. Yes. I've been skydiving. I've been, in my younger days, I've been skiing. I've been scuba diving. I've been aquaplaning. I've been, uh, God knows what. Been bungee jumping. I went off the, the highest one in Queenstown a couple of times, you know. Um, Braver man than me. <laughs> so I've, I've never thought of my disability at all. No, that's really good. Because yeah. it's yeah. it's always been an ability for me. I, look, I that's that's what we do. Um, that, that's what um, you know. It's uh, with working with people in Honey Be Creative. We just it's there's it's not you know everybody's. It's got special abilities. Then you know, look at our director over here, Victoria, doing all the you know, you know, and and Mel, she's gonna, she's around for wings and that. You know, they all um, they're gifted. We're all gifted, everybody, and there's no real just. And I find some people the more physically or or mentally disabled, but they're actually gifted in other areas that more than make up, if not you know, just really. They shine. 
I, re I remember I was eight years old, maybe. I was at school and they, I was asked, can you tie your own shoelaces up? And then it was closely followed by, oh, you probably can't. <clears throat> well, I can't do it the way you guys do it. But I developed my own way of doing my own shoelaces up. And then as I got older, I thought, screw this, I'll just buy slip-ons. That's <laughs> You know, so you, uh, nothing held me back. Mm. There's mm. always a way around something. Mm. You know, like um, a, a lot of my, not, not a lot, there's a few people out there that I thought were my mates. And it's amazing that uh, you go through something like this, you, you find out who your mates are. Yes. And um, the ones that I thought were going to help me didn't. And the ones that <laughs> I didn't even really know, like on Facebook and that, ended up helping me in, in ways that I couldn't have even imagined, you know? I mean, they were, yeah, so it's amazing. That's really good. Well, but it's in, in that the, the real friends have come forward and, you know, it's um, good to be in that position because you just don't, you know, I'd rather have a handful of people that I can trust and acknowledge than having, you know, heaps and heaps of other people that, I can't rely on or trust, you know. Yeah, and and like being going on tour these days, you know. Let's be honest; <laughs> it's a little bit more difficult, mm. but it's achievable. Yes, and that's where Jingo, Jolly Jingo, his wife Tanya, and Bado, who does the festival, that's where they come in. Yes, because they went, no, nah, it's not that hard. You know, so if those three people go, no, it's not that hard, and we've just done um, uh, seven dates in ten days on the road, um, I'm just wondering where's me other mates. You yeah, know? yeah. You live and learn. You do and do, but you you just had fun with Butto and. Jingo and, oh, and I've known them. I've known Bade for twenty odd years. Yep. We worked yep. out. I've known him since about oh, Jesus, ninety ninety five or ninety six when I was in early, they had the Butley brothers. Yes. Um the, the duo. And I've known Jingo for now I think it's seven years. I was the best man at his wedding. Um and we've worked the festival, we're working the festival this year as well. Um, and we we play well together, you know, and and that's what it's all about, you know, and we've proved that you can be in a wheelchair or a scooter and go on tour. Yep. There's hiccups. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah, we've had a few. Yep. <laughs> but... Nothing that can't be worked out. Yep, yep. So, you know, my touring dates aren't over. No, no. By any stretch of the imagination. No, it's... it's just this covert. <laughs> yes. That is, is giving our industry um, hell. Yes, yep. Well, look, is there anything else you want to say before uh, we, we turn into a lighter into doing some a little bit of music? Because that's what we're all good at, really, isn't it? Yeah, so anyone out there watching this or if this is passed on to anyone, um, I need a doctor. Yes, that's right. That um, is, is okay with cerebral palsy. And, and can actually assess me properly. So you need a specialist, basically. A specialist, yes. basically. Um, 
so I can get this appeal happening. Yes. Yeah. So that's the next step. You can need somebody to say, yes, you've actually got it, because I've got the credentials to say so. Yes. Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All these years, mate, I'd be spewing if I found out I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I'd be worried. I'm, a, I'm sorry, <laughs> it's just the water you've been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> move move yeah. from where you are and get some decent water and you'll be right. <laughs> we'll have you walking in no time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Change that water, son. That'll fix you right up. <laughs> oh, oh man! Yeah. But oh, the other thing is, we're going to um, we're thinking about doing this um, if, if this goes well, on a probably fortnightly yep thing, and um, and also we, as I said, uh, we want to get it started with Jingo as well. That'd be great. So uh, there's a few things that we can do. Yep. Um, and there's plenty of rants to go. Um, and I'll be probably asking people to to send in stories as well. That'd be great. Yep. Um, yep. If you're got a, if you're going through crap at the moment, disability or no disability. Send an email through, and maybe we can get a whole lot of uh, rants together, and and just go Let's to town make it on a it. Weekly rant or fortnightly rant sounds wonderful, because it's good to let it all out, really, isn't it? And um, to you know, and uh, like we, you know, as professional performers and entertainers, it's great. But then there's the real side of us and everything, and. Um, I've got a lot of friends too that have been really seriously affected and um, you know lost their livings basically and they've had to to you know keep their head above real in other areas to stay you know it's amazing that entertainment industry is affected so much but the minister for the arts in his infinite wisdom decided not to give us a bailout package. That's right, yes. No, we yeah. don't really need you guys unless there's a bushfire appeal on or something and then they want us to raise 50 million bucks. Yeah, and but even that bushfire money, apparently only a and where is fifth it? of it's actually been paid out. Give me some. Yeah. <laughs> we'll start a fire in your backyard, mate. Well, I think no, it's... no, that's good. No, don't say that, Jesus. <laughs> that's called arson. Arson. <laughs> arson them. Arson them. <laughs> well, I reckon it's for that time to um, take a light-hearted sort of um, change to things. What do you reckon? Why, why are you talking so slow? <laughs> <laughs> As the gimpy factor just yeah, kicked in, Yeah, it's the mate. water. It's the water and gimpy, <laughs> man. <laughs> so you got your harp there. Um, what do you reckon, Mr. Music? Reckon, um, let's, get a, let's get a groove thing happening. Party time!
wrote a bit of a song about this. 35 years paying taxes and COVID came his way. Went to the lodge for DSP, but the government said no way. Oh yeah. Oh no. Said. Oh no. He's been 52 years at the back of the line. He said you don't meet the right criteria and he fell into a bit of a hysteria. Well, others in his boots would feel quite inferior. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He's been 52 years at the back of the line. 35 years paying taxes, then COVID came his way. Went to the lodge, the DSP, but the government said no way. Said 20 points or more would have given you a good score. Good arm working, well you can just go slide out that door. He's been 52 years at the back of the line. Here we go. Hope you've enjoyed the Steady Eddie rant today. Thanks, Steady Eddie. No, mate. Thank you, James. Many more rants and raves, eh? I hope so. Stay tuned, folks. This has been a Honey Bee Creative production. More to come.